We know about Mexico, the Mexico-US border tension, and also Mexican food, the spicy one. But how much do we really know about Bangladesh-Mexico relationship? We'll hear all this from Mexican ambassador to Bangladesh, Mr. Federico Salas. Welcome to our show, Mr. Salas. Thank you very much. It's for me, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here and with your audience. First, we'd like to know uh, the present status of the bilateral relationship uh, with, you know, between Mexico and Bangladesh. Yes. Well, we've had a, a long-standing, I would say, a good relationship with Bangladesh. And our, most of our cooperation and relationship has focused to a great deal on multilateral forums where we have had, you know, different instances of cooperation in the United Nations and the, the family of United Nations organizations. But the bilateral relationship has, is still a relatively small one if you measure it by the, by the uh, amount of trade that we have, the amount of exchanges, people to people uh, type of things. Uh, I am happy to say, however, that the relationship in the past few years has been growing considerably. The trade, for example, has uh, multiplied by a significant amount, over 100%, in the past five years is still, in absolute terms, not a very large number, but the momentum is there for, for a greater uh, exchange of uh, goods and services between uh, Mexico and Bangladesh. One of the things that I want to pursue as ambassador of Mexico to Bangladesh precisely is how to, we can keep that momentum going, keep the tendency growing, and uh, diversify the products that we are exchanging and, uh, and of course, also look at other areas of, uh, of, of for, for mutual benefits, like mutual investments and that type of thing. And I and I think that there's a there's a significant future there that we sh should explore and look into. So uh, here you presented credentials to the president. You uh, held meetings with ABCCI. Uh, you're also going to meet our foreign minister and uh, foreign secretary. Correct. So what are the messages that you want to you know, uh, give here? Well, I think that the first and most important message is that Mexico is clearly committed to strengthening its relationship with, with Bangladesh. And we are taking very specific, very firm, tangible steps in that direction. The first one, and I think the most important one, is that we have uh, made a decision to open a resident embassy in, uh, in Bangladesh which I think is something that uh, within the course of this year will have uh, will open this, the embassy here. And of course, having a, a resident embassy, you know, just, just multiplies the opportunities that exist right. for, uh, to, to strengthen and deepen the, the bilateral relationship. Uh, for that purpose also, and I think it's also, also a very significant step, my, the foreign minister of Mexico, Mr. Marcelo Ebrard, is coming to, uh, to Dhaka uh, the beginning of March, on the 7th and 8th of March, he will be here. This will be the first visit of a Mexican foreign minister to Bangladesh. Um, and of course, the idea is not only to make you know, the formal announcement of the opening of the embassy, but also to start exploring very concrete areas of future cooperation. There's a wide array of, of, of issues that we are interested in. Uh, there's the pharmaceutical sector, for example. There's the fintech. There's IT, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, sometimes many, uh, the, the, the relationships are concentrated with, with Bangladesh on the question of textiles. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are, you know, you know, trading textiles between Mexico and, the, and, uh, and Bangladesh, but we want to go beyond that. We want to go into the new areas mm -hmm. where there is uh, ample growth and there's, you know, there's a more promising future for both our countries. As you are talking about the potentials, uh, what are more potentials that you know the two countries can uh, collaborate and uh, boost the business? And what do you, how do you foresee the trade in the future? Well, as I said, you know, I think that you know the, the level of trade right now is close to about 500 million mm -hmm. uh, in the in in both directions, and uh, but it has grown from what it was 100 million just five years ago to 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 where we are right now. So, it, you know, we, we should really keep, keep that uh, tendency growing. 
But, the, but what's also important is that we need to diversify the products that we are exchanging. So now what are the products that uh, Mexico is exporting to Bangladesh and what Bangladesh is exporting to uh, well, Mexico? Well, for example, let me just give you one example. We export cotton to Bangladesh mm -hmm. and we import some of the textiles made with that, <laughs> with that cotton. Uh, but, all, but, but the thing is that, you know, the, we are, you know, Mexico is a highly industrialized country now. Right. Uh, and, you know, we have a, a, a very significant auto industry in Mexico, uh, just to mention, to mention one. Uh, and I think that it's important that we link up with possibilities with, with Bangladesh in that, in that regard. Mm -hmm. For Bangladesh, of course, export not only the question of textiles, but also, you know, some other uh, you know, products that it can provide to Mexico. And as I was mentioning, there's the issue of pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. but also technological issue, uh, uh, I innovation uh, type resources, okay. IT, uh, fintech, of which this country is doing quite a, qu quite a bit. And this is something that Mexico is very interested in. Another thing that I've talked about with, the, um, with, you know, with some of the business people here in, um, in Dhaka, is that you know for uh, for any country, not only for Bangladesh but certainly for Bangladesh, investing in Mexico or, or having you know a foothold, uh, a footprint in in, uh, in Mexico, is a very advantageous uh, situation because of the network of free trade agreements that Mexico has. Okay. Not only is it with North America, the U.S. and Canada, which of course is the most attractive and promising one, being the largest trading bloc in the world. But we also have a large number of free trade agreements with Latin American countries, okay. with the European Union, with and some of the neighbors of Bangladesh in the in the uh, uh, in the Pacific uh, mm -hmm. Rim, uh, you know, Korea, Japan, etc. So it's um, so I think it's uh, you, you know exchanging and and deepening the economic relationship with Mexico is has a multiplying effect that I think is very advantageous. And for a, for a country like Bangladesh that is growing at the level that it's growing, of course, it's going to have to reach out to the rest of the world. And I, th I think that's a very important thing. Uh, it cannot just you know, remain self-contained here. And I think that Mexico provides a, a very good opportunity for that expansion of, uh, of Bangladesh's reach to the world uh, to, to extend to. Okay, so you are also seeking investment from Bangladesh in Mexico, you know, because... Well, that's certainly, the, that's certainly a possibility, yes. And we're also, we, we would like to see, you know, maybe some Mexican investments coming to Bangladesh. I think that one important step that we need to take is to have an exchange of uh, business delegation going mm -hmm. in, both, in both directions. Because we need to explore, have the business people explore what uh, opportunities there are, what, uh, what's available there. Uh, for for the other country, and I think that once we take those steps, I th you know things will start moving and uh, to to expand the, the the commercial relationship between the two countries. So one interesting thing that happened uh, last year was that uh, Bangladesh's military delegation went to your country to attend 200 years of independence uh, celebration. Yes, and a year earlier, your delegation of military joined. Bangladesh is 50 years of you know independence program yes. so uh, this is very interesting and do you see any opportunities of cooperation between the uh, militaries well i think it's important that the two militaries have had this this mutual delegations e exchanges of course that you know that has to a large extent a symbolic value but i think it also opens up the dialogue that exists between the armed forces of both countries one thing that we're looking uh, uh, as a possibility is to see, you know, gain from the experience that Bangladesh has had in peacekeeping operations. Mm -hmm. uh, Mexico is relatively new in peacekeeping operations and we're still very small, but we hope that this is something that can develop in the, in the, in the, in the future and that we can gain from the experience of, of, of Bangladesh in, in that regard. People-to-people -people contact, cultural cooperation and collaboration are some of the areas uh, where, you know, which are the basis of you know, future uh, relationship. So what are you, uh, I mean, Bangladesh and Mexico doing to further develop this relationship particularly? Well, I think some has been done, Something has, some, a few things have been done. I know you, you have a resident embassy in Mexico City that has um, developed some cultural activities. And, uh, and we have in the past also 
through our Office of the Honorary Consul that we have here in Dhaka, we have conducted some cultural activities. But I think that once we have the embassy, the resident embassy here, I think there's an ample room and opportunity to, uh, to, do, to, do, to expand that. You mentioned, for example, at the beginning, uh, the question of food, of Mexican food. Right. I would like to see probably to have, bring a Mexican chef to, uh, uh, to, to Bangladesh and have maybe a week of culinary uh, experience, uh, which I'm sure that many people here in Bangladesh will enjoy very much. Yeah. As I have, I've only been in, in, in Dhaka for a year and a half, uh, I mean for a, a day and a half, uh, but I've seen, as I've been traveling around the city a little bit, some Mexican restaurants or restaurants yes. that have a Mexican yes, right. twist to it. So there's obviously an affinity and a, like, a liking right. for the kind of food that we have. So what I would like to, to have is to bring real, authentic, you know, Mexican food here. And I'm sure, you know, for us, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, we consider in Mexico our food as being part of our culture. It's a very important part of our culture like most other countries, would, mm -hmm, would, mm -hmm, including sure, Bangladesh. Yeah. Uh, and we're very proud of it. Uh, Mexican cuisine is considered by UNESCO as a world heritage, uh, intangible world heritage uh, 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 item. And, uh, and this is something that we, that we definitely want to take to, you know, to countries like Bangladesh, because that way you, you, know, you bring the taste, you bring the colors, you bring the, the spirit of our country here. But that's, that's just one aspect. I think that we, we should also start working in probably you know, looking at, for example, academic exchanges, student exchanges, collaboration between our uh, institutions of higher education. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that there's also a very good uh, uh, space there to explore uh, of, of future possibilities. And as we move towards the future, I think it's important that we get to know each other better that we get to, you know, uh, to have a, a, mm -hmm. a more high-level dialogue, yeah. people-to-people dialogue, not just to the governments, but mm -hmm. uh, at, as I said, as, acad as academic level. And I think that that is something that, we, that we're going to be moving in that direction. Uh, you're a Pacific nation, and um, now this Indo-Pacific uh, has become a focus of the, you know, global powers. Correct. Uh, and Bangladesh is at the epicenter of, you know, this Indo-Pacific. In so do you see any possibilities how Mexico and Bangladesh can work together? Well, you know, you're, you are right. Mexico is, um, I mean, sometimes in this part of the world, we don't think of us as being in the Pacific, but we are. We are the, the other side of the Pacific. Yeah. And, uh, and we have had in the past a kind of a, a very, you know, active, uh, you know, Pacific, uh, looking policies in the context of APEC with the, with the Pacific Rim countries. Yeah. This, of course, has now expanded to, to include the Indo-Pacific. And, uh, and Mexico is in the process of looking more into, into this situation. I think there's, there's several, several areas where we coincide with, with the countries of the, you know, the, uh, and the vision in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, as, for example, we wanted to be uh, an area that is peaceful, that is secure, that is, you know, with, uh, you know we, because we also, the, you know, the shipping lanes in this area are also uh, something that, you know, that, that affect Mexico. I mean, we mm -hmm. are b both benefiting from it, and we also, and we want to keep it that way. So I think it's important that we, that, you know, uh, especially the countries of the rim of the Indo-Pacific uh, right now, uh, when they think of their strategies towards the future, they also think of the other side of the world because we're also very interested and we can make an important contribution as into uh, you know, guaranteeing some of the values that we want to see the Indo-Pacific to have. You talked about uh, you know, cooperation with Bangladesh in the multinational arena. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> this uh, G20 summit is going to be held in September and your minister will be joining the foreign minister's level meeting in March. Correct. And then we'll be visiting Dhaka. That is correct. So uh, you know, how do you foresee the uh, cooperation, especially um, through G20, uh, because now the world is going through, uh, you know, change, geopolitical change is uh, happening. Yes. Uh, and how do you see the 
well, that I think the possibilities of cooperation. No, there, there's an enormous, uh, you know, room for cooperation. As you probably know, the Indian government recently held a, uh, a conference with all the countries of the South, non-members of right. the uh, of the G20, so that we can have their voices and their concerns uh, taken care of when we. Uh, work on the agenda and the priorities that the G20 should have for the world. And Mexico has been very supportive of what India is doing in that regard as, as president mm -hmm. of the G20 for this year. And I think that this is something that, of course, includes Bangladesh. And, I, and also Bangladesh is, now, is being invited by, by India to be a participant in the G20. So it's important to have the voice of countries such as Bangladesh and others being heard by the G20 member countries like Mexico, uh, so that as, again, so that we take into account your concerns, your priorities, your vision, which I think is also, uh, you know, uh, v uh, you know, very important, and and we share many of these uh, of the of the of the same aspects of that vision. So I think that there's there's there there is in that sense a great uh, 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 room for cooperation between our, our two countries, and we're certainly going to be looking for it in that way. I am hoping that, um, that uh, during the ministerial, the foreign minister's meeting in, in Delhi in March, that our, de our delegations, the Mexican and the Bangladeshi delegation, can also uh, you know, you know, sit down and get to understand each, other, uh, each other's points of views better, so that we as members of the G20 can also be, uh, uh, you know, can also represent those concerns and those yeah. those views better to the rest of the membership. Presently, you know that uh, this economy is uh, facing the impacts of uh, first of all COVID uh, nineteen of pandemic course. and then the Russia Ukraine war. The oil price has gone up and uh, its related uh, commodity prices have uh, gone up. Correct and. Um, uh, do you think that Mexico has has anything that it can offer to Bangladesh to you know address some of the impacts that it is facing now? Well, we certainly we, we could have some products that could be of, of interest to Bangladesh, but I don't you know it's a question of evaluating you know the economics of it. We, you know we are we are an oil producing country, for example, that's one thing, and we also have agricultural products that are that are uh, significant or important. But I think that more importantly and the specific products that we could provide to Bangladesh is the weight that we can that we can bring to the table in order to redress the kind of imbalances that have been created by the war in in Ukraine this is also something that has affected Mexico has affected many countries and it is in the interest of all of us to try to redress the situation in the question of not only you know, food, uh, food supplies, fertilizers, the prices of oil, all of these issues have affected all of us. And so what I think is important is that we act together to try to correct and, and, and in, in, in whichever way possible, avoid this type of, uh, of circumstances from uh, uh, extending towards the future. You know, this, uh, Bangladesh is a major migrant sending country uh, and so does uh, Mexico. Yes. And I think there was a very strong collaboration uh, uh, in the run up to this formation of GFMD, Global Forum on Migration and Development. And, uh, and how does that collaboration you know, continue to make sure that you know, the migrants in the destination countries are safe, protected, the process is uh, you know, safe? Well, you know, you're absolutely right that <clears throat> Mexico uh, has had a, a long history of, of migration, mostly migration to the north, to the, to the United States. We have uh, probably, if not the largest, one of the largest diasporas right. uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the United States. And uh, it has always been in our interest to, to make sure that the migrant is not seen as a criminal, that is not seen in a bad light. These are people who are, uh, you know, seeking a better future for themselves and their families, and that's why they're, you know, moving, uh, you know, to, to a different destination. Um, fortunately, we, you know, we've 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 had uh, in in the United Nations 
and there's been multilateral fora that has also addressed this to make sure that uh, that the migrations are in a you know are you know uh, that there's some regulation to it that they're safe that the human rights of the migrant are uh, you know guaranteed that uh, that their security is also uh, looked for and this is something that we're working not only with Bangladesh but with every country that has uh, you know the, that has this issue of, of migrants going uh, elsewhere. Of course, this is something that we've also have looked and worked with, uh, with Bangladesh uh, in multilateral forum, because we share that same concern for our people and to make sure that, uh, that whatever their, their situation is, uh, um, you know, that, that they're seen as human beings and deserve to be treated as human beings, and that, uh, uh, and that hopefully, that we can address also the, the root causes of migration. In some cases, it has to do with situations of the, you know, the economic situation, poverty and that type of thing. Uh, there's also the situations of conflict and instability. Uh, but now, you, know, you also have to look at, this, uh, at the uh, issues of climate change. And, you know, some, in some areas where agricultural lands are no longer producing what, they're, what, they're, what they should be producing, or, the, or where there has been devastation because of, of uh, freak weather uh, patterns. And so people, you know, migrate because of that. And this is something, you know, that, it's, uh, that, that we need to, you know, also to address in a positive fashion, in a constructive fashion, to make sure that there is a, uh, as I said, you know, that there is a humane treatment to the migrant uh, in the, in the uh, receiving countries.